Hey you all, I hope your day is going great. In this video you are on how to use templates to render HTML to the user. You can see that by default Django imports the render function, which is exactly what we want to use. Let's go ahead and remove these two lines for the snippet list view. And let's instead return a render. And the render function takes in the request. And then it's expecting a template name, snippets snippet underscore list.html. Let's now create the templates folder, which is where Django automatically will look for our template. So go to the snippets folder and right click new folder, templates. And in the templates folder, we want to put another folder called snippets. In the snippets folder, we can create a new file and call it snippet underscore list.html. If you reload your page, you will see that everything is blank, which of course is intended because our HTML file is still empty. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm using Emmet with Adam, so I can just hit an exclamation mark and then hit tab. And then inside of the body, I'm going to create an h1, which says hello. And you will see hello printed out. Next up, let's create a variable called name and pass it to our template and see how we can print out its value. Again, in the snippet list, View, create a name and set that equal to, let's say, Bob. And then the render function also takes in a dictionary. And that is the context it will use to later tell our template which variables are available to be printed. You'll see how that works in a minute. So just pass it a dictionary. Of course, we have to specify a key value pair. So let's just use name as the key and then the name variable as the value. We can now use the Django templating language to actually print out the name variable. So let's change this name to names and we'll set it equal to Bob and Jackson and Taylor and adjust the key and value pair as well. And now let's go back inside of the snippet list or HTML. You can now use a for tag to loop over all of the elements in our list. So let's get rid of this. And you use tags via, again, opening and closing curly brackets and then a percent sign like this. And this simply says for name in names. And then we also need an end for tag. And in here we can now, let's say, spit down an h2, printing out again the name. And you now see all of our names being printed out using the for loop, of course. Right before the end for tag, we can also use the empty tag like this. And this will basically fire every time our list is completely empty. And this will then say, no elements found in the list. So let's go ahead and remove all of them. And you see, instead of looping over, it simply gives us no elements found in the list. You may remember that we used the reverse function in the last episode. A template tag which does pretty much the same thing is the URL tag. Let's go in here and get rid of this because we already demonstrated that. And create an A. If we go back in our URLs, you will see that we had the namespace of snippets. And we assigned the name of detail to this particular path for viewing the snippet detail view. So now we can use the URL tag. Again, with the name of our namespace first and then this colon and then the name of our path which was detail leads to detail view one you see that the reverse for detail with no arguments was not found and of course that makes sense because our snippet detail is expecting this id id equal to just any value we want like one and we get leads to detail view one and if we click that we get two snippets and one awesome you can also remove this id is equal to and it will still work. Another very common template tag you are going to use is the if else tag. And let's just create a variable called is expired and set it to true. And then we can also pass it in our context dictionary. Give it the key of is expired. And in here we can check if is expired. And then we have the else tag. 
and this is going to say is expired and this one is going to say is not expired we get is expired because of course we set it to true and if we change that to false we get is not expired let's again revert back to a single name and we can again print it out in an h2 provides us with a concept called template filters which we can use to basically filter the output of in this case the name variable and we do it via this pipe symbol upper in you see that we get bob in uppercase letters it's also possible to create your own template tags and filters but i'm going to cover that in another video next up we want to be able to extract the common markup we have among our html files to its own file such as this header and the stock type you know and to do that we are going to create a new file called base.html and let's just copy this snippet list.html code in here and we can use the block tag to specify certain areas in a snippet that other templates can adjust for the title instead of putting in document we're going to use the block tag and then give it the name of title and then right after that we are going to say end block title and for the body we are going to remove this entire h2 and say block content and then end block content and what we can now do in our snippet list.html is simply extend the space.html template so go in here and get rid of everything basically and we can say extends snippets base.html and now that we have that we can specify the blocks basically that we want to be able to put in at runtime into this template for this particular snippet list I think it's easier to understand as soon as we see how it works so let's say block title and we're going to give it the title of simply snippet list and then end block title and then let's specify the block content and end block and we're going to have an h2 which just says this is the snippet list template and you see this is the snippet list template and if we right click and inspect you can see a markup which we put into this file and by specifying these tags Django knows to put this into that spot at runtime and to put this block content block into here and this way we can just use the same base.html template for many other templates thus extract that common markup which of course keeps everything short and by the way you can name them everything you want they don't have to be named title and content we can also name them block bob like this but of course that wouldn't really make sense so i'm going to go for title in my apps and it will still work and one more thing we can do to extract code is to include other templates so let's say we have box.html and by the way it's a good convention to prefix the templates you're going to include with an underscore and this is just going to be a div let's give it a style of background color blue and width of 50 pixels and height of 50 pixels and let's just say we wanted to have this box element inside of this snippet list we could of course go ahead and just copy it in here and that will work but we can also use the include tag by simply saying include then again specify the template name which is under snippets and underscore box.html and you still see our box popping up another thing i want to show you real quick is how to use the static tag because of course having javascript and css is a common use case and we can go in here and just use a link and set the href equal to static styles.css and before we can use the static tag we have to load it just go to the top of your base.html and use the load tag static and then we need to create the static directory and we specified the name as styles.css and let's set everything to color red 
And in here we're going to use an H2, so we can see the colorful uh, text. This should be red now. And most times you actually do need to restart your server, so let's do that. And you see that it's now red. Awesome. You can do pretty much the same thing with your JavaScript. You just have to know that this returns the path to your actual static file, which you included here. So yeah. And one last reminder I want to give you is to try to keep your template as clean as possible. They are not really meant to do the heavy lifting in your application. That should be done elsewhere, but not in your templates. It's just going to confuse you down the road. Anyway, I hope you learned a lot in this part. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. I hope to see you inside of the next one and cheers.